Hi, and welcome to the session in which we will take a closer look at the theoretical foundations of community work. This overview is based on the book, The Theory and Practice of Community Work, A Southern African Perspective, by Mike Weyer. Ready? Okay, let's start with our problem statement. Social work students sometimes find it difficult to understand the theories, models and perspectives on which community work is based. This is quite understandable because these foundations tend to be very abstract. This especially pertains to practice perspectives and practice models, the focus of this presentation. In this quick overview, I'm going to try to make it all as practical as possible. However, as always, go back to the book to get the whole story. The first two concepts that you will encounter are the so-called theories for social work and the practice frameworks. These provide the context within which practice perspectives and practice models should be seen. By providing broad insight into the nature of client systems and the social workers helping activities, and by giving guidance on how to bring about change in people and their lives. I am, just as an example, going to focus on one of these aspects, and that is the broad goals of the community workers helping activities. Community work strives to create equity, liberation and especially participation. These broad goals can be illustrated with the following sequence of images. First you have the practical reality, which is characterized by inequality, where some people have a lot and others very little. The first goal is not to create equality, where everybody is provided with the same things, but rather equity, where things, such as goods, services and money, is provided according to need. This is typically the goal when you utilize the social planning model. The second basic goal is liberation, where you will eliminate the barriers that prevent people from gaining access to the things that they require. This is typically achieved through social action, community education and social marketing as models. The third and arguably the most important goal is participation. It aims to empower people in such a way that they will become part of the game of life and not only consumers of goods and services. This is mostly achieved through community development. It is within the context of these three broad goals that we will next look at practice perspectives. Practice perspectives are basically the way in which social workers look at social systems in general and human behavior in particular. If you look back at your community of origin, which picture springs to mind? Just think about it for a minute. Is it a negative picture of joblessness, poverty, marital and family conflict, alcohol abuse and an overriding feeling of helplessness? Or is it a positive picture of people trying to do the best with what they've got and who strive to improve their own lives, the lives of their children and those of the community in general? Community work wants you to look at communities in two ways. The first is from an ecosystem's perspective. In practice, this perspective would tell you that people do not function in isolation, but are influenced by a number of other forces. The first one that springs to mind are the significant others in their lives. If they are married, it would be the husband or wife. It could also be a brother, a mother, etc. These relationships also do not function in isolation. They are influenced by a number of other relationships, be it family, friends, colleagues, or other interest groups such as the church. You can take it a level higher 
and look at the influence that the economy, politics, culture, available services and even the environment has on the individual. But here's the thing. The process also works the other way around. Our individual can also influence everybody and everything in his or her environment. It is the same as throwing a stone in a pond and seeing the ripples that goes out from there. And so, the basic assumption of the ecosystem's perspective is that man and his environment are interrelated and, therefore, if you change one system, it will influence the rest. One of the core goals of community work is to use this reciprocal effect in order to improve the community. To change individuals in the community so that they would have a positive influence on others, but also to change the system as a whole so that it would have a positive influence on everybody who lives in it. The second way in which community workers should look at the community is through a strengths perspective. The basic assumption of this perspective is that everybody has strengths. One of the core goals in community work is to discover the strengths that already exist in the community and then utilize it. Possibly one of the best examples of a strengths perspective is one expressed by Einstein. He said that everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid. If you therefore work with communities, don't look at what they don't have, but for the special type of genius that each member has to offer. The list is endless. It could be a lifetime of experience, a much needed personality quality, trait or virtue, a vast reservoir of knowledge, a special talent, culture and a vast network of interpersonal relationships that make up the community itself. Figure out what you need, find it and then utilize it. In the case of practice models, we move from a way of looking towards a way of doing. The community change practice models, or practice models for short, form the conceptual framework on which the book is based and will be covered in detail later. Suffice to say at this stage that the practice models are based on the assumption that the intervention required for community change can take on different forms. There are five different ways in which community work can be done in Southern Africa. These are through community development, social planning, community education, social marketing and social action. The entire part two of the book is devoted to looking at the different ways in which these practice models could be implemented in practice. More about the models later. Until then, all the best with getting to grips with the finer detail of the theoretical foundations on which these interventions are based. <laughs>